Well, hello everyone. On the bench today is a another Yazoo FT101E. Now this rig is not mine; it does belong to a customer. So I've been wanting to bring the uh, FT101 series back, and now we have a chance to. Been very busy. Uh, still working in the uh, house. About halfway done with the kitchen, got all the new cabinets built and put in. Floors all repaired, got to do some painting, put the new linoleum down. Still quite a bit of work to do. But uh it's been taking, you know, a lot of time in the past couple of weeks here. So we wanted to look at this. Uh there is one problem that he went ahead and told me right to start with that needs to be taken care of now. You know, looking over the radio, I've seen quite a bit of problems. But one problem that he said he's noticed that uh, transmitter and receiver are not aligned together. Now, I did see someone posted on one of the videos here in the past couple of days. They wanted to know how to adjust that to align the uh, receive with the transmitter. Well, we're going to show you that in this video today. But, you know, just wanted to go through it and, uh, like I say, a lot of things need to be done with this. All the controls are dirty. Mode switch is intermittent, depending on what you put it on. Half the time it won't work on the uh, lower side band. As you sit there and play with it, so, yeah, there's a lot of dirty controls. So we're going to have to get those cleaned up. But, uh, we just want to look at a couple of things today. Time is kind of limited right now, so I just thought I'd go ahead and, uh, go through with this and do a few things and I may sound a little funny I've allergies has really been acting up I think all that sawdust and stuff has uh, been working on me so <laughs> anyway as I said uh, let me turn the volume up Show you an easy way. Right, this will be one of the easiest way to tell if your transmit receiver's off frequency. Notice when I turn the clarifier on. He went off frequency on us. And someone's bleeding over right on top of him, so. Well, he's tuned in there, I'll turn the clarifier off. So he's completely gone off frequency. So that tells me right there that the uh, transmit and receiver are not aligned correctly. So let's go ahead and look at what we got to do to uh, take care of this little problem. Okay, so what we're going to do is that we got the radio on. We got the clarifier set on exactly zero. And I got the clarify button pushed in so the little light is on. If you'll notice right down here, you'll see a couple of terminals. Should be a blue wire, a couple of green wires, and then a ground. I'll zoom in on that so you can see it. Right there, you can see the blue wire hiding up on the dab. But it's going to be this middle terminal, and this is where we want to check our voltage at. So what we do, we'll ground. And we'll put our voltmeter probe right there. And we're at 3.487 volts. Right 
and what we're going to do is uh, turn the clear off barrel off and you can see now it's at 3.36 volts and with the clear off barrel on we're at 3.487 volts okay it's settled to 3.486 volts now record that number because what you're going to do is turn the clear off barrel off and you see it changed to 3.364 volts and what we're going to look at is right up here in this corner there is a valve resistor now you'll have to take the uh, screws out of the case and lift the case up just stick one of the screws back in there to hold it up but if you look right there you can see this valve resistor here All I'm going to do is adjust this for the same reading when the clear fire was on. I'm going to tell you it's real touchy. Getting close. Almost had it. Three point four eight five. And whip it on with three point four eight five. All right, that step is complete. And like I say, you know that was just by setting that uh, verbal resistor connect it up clarify zero clarify on record the voltage turn it off adjust the resistor to match the clarify voltage now that we got the receiver on, um, on frequency we'll move over to the transmit side so here on the regulator board you'll see three parts you have a bias part zero set and volt. What we want to do is use this zero um, control. This little variable resistor here right in the center. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to reach around here and uh, make sure the heater switch is off and put the radio in MOX position. We see our voltage is 3.53. So we're going to come up here and we're going to adjust this one. Wrong way. A little bit low. Point four eight three, 3.49 you don't have to move these things very far three point four eight seven turn the marks off 3.486 27.6 is not going to make a whole lot of difference it's nice to go ahead and get it completely on there though
3.484 now we'll go back and we'll check the other side okay I went back and I checked the other side too and all three settings are the same you want the voltage the same with clarifier on clarifier off and you want the same when you turn the marks on the marks off let me see if I can find a good station talking noise right here I'll turn the clarifier on we shouldn't tell it much difference at all it's off that's on it's off that's back on now we know that our uh, transmit receive is aligned correctly now as long as there's no change to clarify off clarify on we'll pretty much be spot on now that we're under here I want to go ahead and spray out this uh, mode switch because it's definitely intermitted and the uh, volume control switch we may even have to take this plate off and go ahead and spray out the band switch also Go ahead and uh, get this a good cleaning. You don't have to use a lot because you don't want that phenolic material to soak up the uh, contact cleaner. see how she sounds now all right that made a big difference in this mode switch uh, no problems now be going between upper and lower side bands Okay, when the owner picked this radio up, it was missing the noise blanker board and the regulator board. So he had another 101E at the house that he just pulled those out of. That was a parts rig and he put it in this one. I'm feeding a about a minus 80 dBm signal into the radio to get an S9. And that's down just a bit. So that's some 
controls on this no uh, noise breaker board that probably need to be peaked just a little bit to go ahead and get that signal up like it should. You hear the tone. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to shut the radio off, pull the noise breaker board, put an extender card in there and we'll get it on up so we can uh, take a look at adjusting that. Okay, you can see I got my extender cord plugged in. Now when you're using these, uh, you got to be careful. This will plug in either way. You want to make sure that you plug it in the right way when you go into the extender cord. If not, you're going to create some problems because some of the voltage will then be on ground. So what we want to do, we want to adjust this coil and this trimmer. So I'm going to go ahead and put the board in. I'm going to get the radio uh, set back up and we'll go ahead and get those adjusted. Now all I'm going to do is let y'all watch the S meter. So I adjust this and see just how much more signal we can get out of it. There was a bit of wax in this slug. All I've done was took my hot air and just heated it up a little bit and got that cool so I can turn it. You don't want to force anything and crack it. Alright, now we'll peek that one and see if uh, we can get a little more out of it. back to the trimmer Looks like we got about uh that would be twenty over nine. That would be ten over nine. Looks like we're about six or seven over nine. What a go Alright, so I'm feeding in a minus one hundred dBm signal. And it's fairly noticeable in the receiver. Now I put an extender card here and I have the RF board sticking up here. What I'm going to do is just shut it off. We're going to pull his RF board out. And we're going to stick one of mine in here. Let's see what kind of difference this makes. And it's already a whole lot louder. And I can lock it down. It's about a hundred and ten. That's a hundred and twenty dBm. I'm still hearing it in the receiver. That tells me that either we got a bad component or our RF device here on this board is uh, about seen its best days. Okay, I replaced his uh, transistor with a 3SK40 <clears throat> we'll 
we'll put it in there. I have a generator set at minus 120 dBm and we'll turn it on and see if we hear a signal this time. And we do. So his transistor was a little weak. So that's got the receiver back up to where it needs to be. Now there's one other thing I wanted to point out and he uh, actually asked me about this. And that is your PA tubes. You know, if you read a lot on the internet, they tell you that uh, Yezu recommended that you use Toshiba brand tubes in these rigs. And the reason for that was it would neutralize better. If you went in and you changed it to American brand, so like Sylvania or GE or whatever, that you had to go in and make a modification and change a capacitor out. What you've got to do is put a tube in here that is a match build. I didn't say a match pair. In other words, if you put a, on the tube tester and it reads 98.5% and you put the other tube in there that you want it to read 98.5%, that's not what I'm talking about. And this physical build of the tube. Now if you look here, let me turn the lights off so you can see in here a little better. And I think you can already see what I'm talking about. Now if you look at the tube on the left, it's probably twice as bright as the tube on the right. The left tube has a whole lot brighter filament. There's a reason for that. Let me go ahead and pop these valves out so you can see. Well, I got both tubes out. This one that was glowing dim, that's a realistic lifetime tube. This one that was glowing bright. Well, I can make it out. It is a Sylvania. So these tubes are built entirely different from each other. You can see the uh, structure inside is different. If you look at the top of it, you can see that your center is different. This one here actually sticks up in the center. The one on the uh, left has longer pins that run through down through the cathode. So two entirely different tubes. And that is a big no-no. And mostly the reason for that is tube capacitance. If the tubes are not built the same, the capacitance are going to be completely different. Now I can already tell you this tube here is not in the greatest shape. Um, you can see this brown ring around the gutter material. Looks like the tube's starting to get a little gassy anyway. But you can see that brown ring around, right around that gutter. That side there looks okay. But this side is starting to get a brown ring around it. But it's important that... When you, you see the top, the one on the right, you see the cutout is kind of a triangle shape. And uh, the cutout on this one is more like a uh, half moon. See, so, so two entirely different tubes. Same tube number, but the construction is completely different. And that's a big no-no because uh, you cannot match the capacitance in the tubes using two uh, completely different builds. Well, I just talked with the owner and he's going to go ahead and uh, order a set of tubes for it. 
They'll probably give them through Aria parts. That's going to cost them a little bit of money. Sometime in the future, and when I say in the future, that means not now, but sometime in the near future, I am going to take one of these radios and do the 6146 conversion to it. Remove the 6JS6s, install new two sockets, and get one up and running on the uh, 6146s. Um, it's a lot easier to define, a whole lot cheaper. And you can get about the same power out of it. I know there's been uh, several reported bugs when uh, doing so, but gonna, we're going to look at doing that in the future. So you might be saying to yourself, well buddy, I've changed tubes in these rigs and run them and I've had no problems. Everybody says I sound fine. Well, that may be true, but have you looked at it on the spectrum analyzer? That's the big key. I ain't talking about on the oscilloscope now. I know a lot of people like to look at it on the oscilloscope, but I mean on the spectrum analyzer. Well, I got the radio set up on 14.200, and we're going to look at it on the spectrum analyzer. Okay, I'm going to flip the radio over to marks. And remember now, we are we're in the tune position. So we're not going full drive. And there you go. Now if I tune the loading, you know, back the loading down, cut some of the wattage down. You can see now we have a clean signal. But when I peek it, See that right there? That's not pretty at all. And that's right on the peak. I'm also seeing it on the uh, IFR over there, so that verifies that it's not the uh, yeah you can see it right down the IFR also so, yep so that's what tubes do if it ain't right so guys when the parts come in we'll uh, get the parts of tubes and stuff we'll go ahead and do a uh, full transmitter alignment and probably go ahead and check this uh, 12BY7 you can see it is uh, tram branded which probably nothing wrong with it but we need to check it and make sure and we also need to find a cover to go on that because it doesn't have one on it but yeah when the tubes come in We'll go ahead and we'll sit down and we'll go through the transmitter, make sure it's uh, up to par. And we're seeing 100 watts out on the watt meter, but it just doesn't look right. Um, I don't even want to even chance putting them tubes on there. You know, we want a good clean signal. Also, my plans was to do a review here shortly and I know my buddy said pain good has been waiting on it but uh, we got this one in and found out it was faulty side P works good side A does not work found some interesting things here so we're going to probably uh, end up doing a repair on this and give one away and the reason why I'm saying that is that uh, when I told Bang good what was going on with it They immediately shipped me another one. So we have a second one here to replace the other one. So we're going to uh, we're going to repair the other one, and uh, like I say, we're going to give one of them away. 
um, Banggood sent this to me for review you know they don't sponsor me they don't pay me to do any reviews but they did uh, send me this to try out and do a review on it and you know it's not a bad counter it's it's uh, a little bit slower than what I like but if you're working on CB radios or ham radios I think it would do just what you need I wanted another one that would read up to uh, at least 1.5 gigahertz when I'm working on uh, 23 centimeter equipment I've got a uh, old Timmer sitting over there and that thing is terrible it is a piece of junk and <laughs> I then try to go in and repair it and I just can't get no information that I need on it so Bang Good sent me one of these so we're going to give it a go and see how it does so maybe in the next video we'll be uh, doing some talk but we're definitely going to tear the other one down find out what caused the problem on the uh, on channel A and see if we can get it back fixed and like I said we're going to give one of them away and we ain't forgot about the uh, the Johnson sitting over there like I say the, uh, the Johnson Viking uh, Ranger is working pretty decent um, I got some more video footage of that on part two of it we'll be getting that up sometime in the next couple of weeks but I wanted to get started on the uh, the Viking 2 but I was waiting for something to come in and it's finally came in this is a uh, Johnson Viking model 122 VFO and as you can see she looks a little rough So we're going to have a good time going through this and uh, getting it up and working. You know, it could be rough on the outside, could be perfect on the inside. Um, looking at it, that's pretty much what I'm thinking. The inside's going to be just fine. Um, you know, it's got a lot of battle scars. It tells a story. It's telling me it's been sitting somewhere where it's been very damp lately. You can see some... Uh, corrosion on the washers here and rust on the screws and all this right here is where uh, mold has got on behind, in behind the paint and uh, let's pop the paint off and you can see the paint has flaked off of it uh, I don't care about how some certain things look especially when it's vintage this thing's over 50 years old you know it's not going to look perfect uh, if I can get a good scan of the front of it so I can uh, recreate these logos and this strip across here and the writing I may sand it down and repaint it but that's only if I can do that um, I haven't seen any of these logos here on the internet anywhere I did find a face plate and I wanted $60 just for this piece of uh, aluminum you know what six and a half or six and a well six and a half or seven yeah, 60 bucks for this piece of aluminum and it looked pretty good but you know I'm not going to put $60 into something like that but if I can recreate this front we'll strip it down and paint it if not we'll just clean it up and it's going to be what it's going to be anyway uh, sorry for the short video sorry for not getting videos out any sooner but I see it's it's busy here at the radio shop a lot of things going on and you know, I can get out here, especially if I can get this house finished, that's going to get a lot of time saved and I can get back out here in the shop because we have got plenty to do. So if, you, uh, if you're emailing me and I'm not getting back to you, I apologize. It's just, like I say, so much going on. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the little video and uh, we'll be looking at your comments down below. You know, I always try to uh, reply to everybody that replies to my video. It's it's getting harder and harder to do that because we're getting so many comments now. But we'll do, you know, we'll do what we can. Anyway, uh, click on the Show More tab down below and uh, follow links, Patreon to the website at uh, GoCarters.com. And we'll catch you in the next video. See you now.